But you believe, and I think this is going to irritate some folks, I agree with you, you believe that the Israel of God are believing Jews. Well, that's right. And one of the reasons why that's such a critical thing is that it helps us to understand whether or not the church is the new Israel, or the church takes over the uh, the promises that were made to Israel. Many people today who hold to what's called replacement theology say that various verses like, oh, Galatians 6.16 and Philippians 3 verse 3 prove that the church takes over all the promises to Israel. But I don't think that's the case. As uh, one example in Galatians 6.16, we find a reference to the Israel of God, but that doesn't mean the church is the new Israel. Contextually, Paul, who himself was a Jew, is referring to saved Jews. Mm -hmm. That is to say, Jews who have trusted in Jesus Christ for salvation. I might mention to you, Jan, that even in the book of Acts, we find Israel mentioned 20 times and the church mentioned 19 times. And then Paul himself in Romans 9 through 11 goes on to very clearly and definitively stating that God still has a plan for ethnic Israel. You know, very clearly the church right. and Israel remain distinct. Right. And that, of course, is sort of the hallmark of uh, what you and I believe, which is dispensationalism, which is different than <laughs> the belief systems of amillennialism, preterism, and some other isms that we could talk about. But this is the hallmark of dispensationalism is that there are two distinct people of the church and Israel. And I appreciate how you and Dr. Hitchcock and others handle that. I want to keep my promise and head into America in Prophecy. And you suggest there's no consensus on how America fits into the end time picture. We clearly are a part of all nations, which are referred to very often. You don't even feel we're the young lions referenced in Ezekiel 38:13. Well, no, I don't. I, I think that there's a tendency to uh, sometimes read things into the text of Scripture, and this is not to call into question some of my uh, wonderful brothers and sisters who've written on this topic who have held to some of these views. I think that what all of us has to do is to make sure that first and foremost we're seeking to be biblicists even before we're dispensationalists or before we're any other theological system. And so by allowing Scripture to govern everything that I believe, I, I think that there's a tendency sometimes to read into the text of Scripture some things that, you know, may not be there. And so the, the reference to the young lions or the reference to the land divided by rivers right, in right. Isaiah 18, mm -hmm. 1 to 7, you know, allegedly being the Mississippi River, or the reference to the land of Tarshish in Ezekiel 38. I mean, these are all up for discussion as to whether or not they refer to America. My personal belief is that America is not mentioned in Bible prophecy, and that leads me to the question, why not? You would expect America to be mentioned because we're the primary ally, at least we have been the primary ally of Israel. With the exception of the last eight years, but I do believe we have a very pro-Israel administration as we speak, and I've heard uh, Nikki Haley, ambassador to the United Nations here very recently, and my goodness, she's just taking a stand for Israel that is knocking it out of the park, to put it mildly. And that's wonderful and good. The, the, the issue that I raise in my book, though, is that the rapture will take yeah. place, I believe, before the tribulation period. And when that happens, most of your pro-Israel people mm -hmm. in the United States will vanish. So the question becomes, what will happen to the United States when all pro-Israel Christians vanish? And I make that qualifications because not every Christian is pro-Israel. That's right. There are some Christians who believe that the church replaces Israel. So qualifications are, are very necessary. But the fact is, is that when the rapture happens, support for Israel is going to become greatly depleted. And I think that at that point, anti-Semitism is going to escalate like you've never seen it before. Well, Ron, since you brought that up, and I think it's one of the primary end-time signs as well, I just happened to pick up a periodical here by a Christian leader. And again, Christian leader, I'm not going to name him because I'm not going to give this person any attention or send folks to his website. A catalog he produces talking about the Jews, the gods of chaos, bring global devastation. That's a DVD, I think. Goldman Sachs 666 is the world's richest and most wicked bank, and Rothschild is its secret 
prince and head, empire of the elite, Rothschild, four pillars of power, and the takeover of America. I could go on and on. The devil men in action, that's the Jews, by the way. This is a Christian leader. Again, I'm not going to name him. I could cite another 20 items that he's peddling in this catalog, and it's shocking. Well, you know, I come across things just like that, and it is bewildering. And to me, the solution to all of that is to take a proper approach, a literal approach to understanding biblical prophecy. I don't know how you feel about it, Jan, but it seems to me with this emphasis on replacement theology Mm -hmm. that anti-Semitism is a natural result of that kind of thinking. Exactly. And so what you believe matters. What you believe in terms of Bible prophecy has an impact on how you view the Jewish people. Now, here's why that is so important, Jan, and you know where I'm going with this. It's the Abrahamic covenant back in Genesis 12. You know, God promised Abraham, those who bless you, I will bless but those who curse you, I will curse. Now, God forbid that America should ever turn its back on Israel, because if America turns its back on Israel, including after the rapture, you know, God has not ever reneged on the Abrahamic covenant in Genesis 12. If America turns its back on Israel and curses Israel, I think that we're going to reap a massively bad harvest at that point. And of course, Scripture actually indicates that that's what's going to happen, because I think that uh, what's going to happen to America is that America is going to weaken and be subsumed into the globalism of the end time. And I hate to say it because I'm a patriot, but I also think that in the end times, America will likely join up with the forces of the Antichrist. Because when you read Zechariah 12 and Zechariah 14 and the book of Revelation, it's clear that all the nations of the earth and all the kings of the earth move against Jerusalem. And so I hesitate to say it, but you know, I'm a biblicist. All the nations must include the United States. Yeah, and I think one of the things you conclude, Dr. Rhodes, in in the book is that we simply could suffer the fallout from judgment. I think that America is ripe for judgment, and in fact, I raise the question, are we at Romans 1? Yeah, and and I think we are. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell. I have on the line Dr. Ron Rhodes, because we're carrying his newest book, Bible Prophecy Answer Book, Everything You Need to Know About the End Times. We have seriously cut back on some of our products, but I felt this was so important because it's a little encyclopedia. It's about 250 pages with every imaginable topic covering end times from rapture, judgment seat of Christ, tribulation, antichrist, 144,000, tribulation, campaign of Armageddon, and much, much more, all in a little paperback. It's in our store, olivetreeviews.org, olivetreeviews.org views.org. Give us a call and it'll be in our print and it's already been in our e-newsletter. It's coming out in a forthcoming print newsletter out in a couple of weeks. Let's move on, Ron, to another topic or two as time allows here. Your thoughts, and you talk about it, in on the one world religion and you cite the Catholic Church, Revelation 17, the Antichrist eventually is going to bump off the false prophet, head of the one world world religion. And you ask if this role couldn't uh, possibly just be an apostate Christianity? Could it be the Catholic Church? Perhaps just general paganism? Do you have a leaning here? Well, I have a leaning towards some kind of a paganism. And the reason I say that is that whatever your view on this false religious system is, then, you know, it has to, according to the book of Revelation, be the same kind of religion that was featured in Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Medo-Persia, Mm -hmm. Greece, Rome, and the Antichrist Empire. And we see this in the book of Revelation. And so the problem that I had with apostate Christendom and the Roman Catholic Church is we didn't see those influencing Egypt and Assyria and Babylon and Medo-Persia and Greece and Rome. However, it is entirely possible that there could be some form of apostate Christianity that sort of forms a hybrid religion with various forms of paganism. 